Hello Summoners and welcome to another Pro Guides video. My name is Kristoff and in this video, we're going to cover everything you need to know about the next champion, Senna. Senna can be played as a solo laner, but highly recommended that she plays as a support or marksman because of how her kit is designed. All of her abilities work best with a teammate nearby, she's a support marksman who deals decent damage while also providing plenty of utility for her team. Okay, and for our question of the day, which skin line do you think fits Senna's aesthetic best? Personally, I'm all for Project Senna, as not only would it look really great on her, but should be able to match Lucian's awesome Project skin as well. But before we get started, if you guys want to increase your rank this season and get those end of the season rewards, make sure to click the link below to go to ProGuides.com. We've been doing a ton of advanced content recently, which I'm sure will help all of you guys climb the ranks this season. Also, if you guys are interested in picking up a coach, we've got coaches online right now to help you out. Trust me guys, you won't regret signing up. Now with that being said, let's jump right into the video. So what are some reasons why you should play Senna? Well, she's a support with a lot of unique utility, most notably her Mist, which allows her to stealth her allies. She also has a very high skill cap, meaning that you'll have lots to learn and can always improve. And lastly, she has an arguably overloaded kit. She's got a ton of incredible abilities, she's gonna be so much fun to play and feel so satisfying when you guys master her. Okay, let's talk about some of the strengths. Well, she's got great scaling, She's a carry kind of support, so that's perfect for solo queue. She has very, very high range, and she also brings stealth, healing, global ultimate, and some crowd control. Okay, let's talk about some of her weaknesses though. Well, first off, she's quite squishy. She also has pretty long cooldowns as well, and also her attack speed scaling is quite weak. She also has a pretty weak early game and faces difficulty against melee champions. Okay, now let's break down her abilities. Senna's passive is one of the most complicated ones in the game. Senna's attacks and abilities apply mist to enemy champions. If she hits an enemy marked with mist, she deals a percentage of their current health as bonus damage and then collects the mist. Enemy champions, large minions, and large monsters drop a mist wraith that Senna can collect as well. It's important to note that epic monsters drop two mist wraiths. When collecting them, Senna gains a stack of mist and three gold. Each stack of mist grants Senna one bonus AD, and every 25 stacks of it grants her 25 bonus attack range and 15% critical strike chance. If she exceeds 100% critical chance, she'll convert 35% of the bonus crit chance into lifesteal. Additionally, Senna converts the ability power from the Spell Thief's Edge item line into adaptive force. Okay, now if that wasn't complicated enough, there's actually a second part to her passive. The second part is Relic Cannon. Senna does not gain attack damage from leveling, but instead gains it from her passive, which we just talked about. However, levels do lower the windup on her passive, and her critical strikes also deal reduced damage. Senna also deals bonus basic attack damage, currently sitting at 20%, and also gains 10 to 20% of her target's movement speed as bonus movement speed after auto attacking them. Overall, this passive feels more like a way to gatekeep Senna, while also making sure that she opens up diversity in the bot lane. While her scaling is great because of it, her auto attacks are rather clunky early on and make her a little weaker than she would be otherwise. Her first main ability is her Q, Piercing Darkness, which pays homage to Lucian's Q, Piercing Light. The difference is that it does a little less damage, but it's better in every other way. Senna's Q can target allies, wards, and even turrets. In addition to this, it also heals allies it hits alongside damaging enemies it hits. Senna's Q's cooldown is also reduced by one second every time she basic attacks, and it also resets her basic attack timer. The biggest difference from Lucian's Q is how much longer the range is on Senna's. Make sure to take advantage of this by either poking your opponents or using it to snipe your opponents from safety. Also note that the range on her Q increases with Senna's attack range and also that it applies on hit effects. A nifty little trick you guys are gonna learn is first place a ward and then Q through it to get that last bit of damage off on your targets. Also queuing a Mist Wraith will collect it. 
Senna's W, Last Embrace, is her only crowd control ability. When used, she throws out a glob of black mist towards her cursor, latching onto the first enemy hit. After a second, the mist spreads to nearby enemies and roots everyone caught in it. Overall, it's actually a pretty weak ability. The damage on it is actually insane, as it has a .780 ratio. The issue is that it has a slow missile speed and gives a lot of time for enemies to react even after it's latched on. It's unrealistic to expect to root more than one target unless you're following up on another teammate's crowd control and even landing it all together can be difficult because of how slow it really is. This is a nice addition to Senna's kit as it gives her a little bit more crowd control and helps diversify her skill set, but it's really not that great in its current form. While some might argue that this ability overloads her kit, her only CC is a route that is also quite easy to dodge. For comparison, it's even slower than a Morgana Q. Okay, now let's go on to her E. Senna's strongest ability is without a doubt her E, Curse of the Black Mist. Senna surrounds herself in a black mist for six to eight seconds depending on the level, providing her and her allies within it camouflage and wraith form. Wraith form is something new to the game. Enemies will see you as an actual wraith and won't be able to discern who you are, unless they're extremely close to you. Casting abilities or auto-attacking will cause Senna to lose her camouflage and wraith form briefly. However, after 1.5 seconds, she is able to regain both of these. The main caveat to this ability is that if you get extremely close to her, you can actually see Senna and still target her. Essentially, she's a moving Akali Shroud. So, many characters are able to take advantage of this and its defensive properties are extremely valuable. With it, she'll be able to fend off dives and also provide some protection in the late game. Especially in competitive play, this will come in handy when fights transition into those last auto attacks where just a momentary stealth can decide victory or death. One of Senna's most hyped up abilities is her ultimate, Dawning Shadow. The biggest strength of it are its range and speed by far. The numbers on it aren't super impressive, but it's still a great ability nevertheless. After a brief delay, Senna fires a gigantic spectrum of light in a target direction. There are two zones of her ultimate, the blast radius and the ray of light. Enemies caught in the blast radius take damage, while allies caught in the light receive a shield for three seconds. The range on this ultimate is global, and it travels across the map almost instantly. Okay, now let's move on to the builds. Senna's build is highly speculative. It's possible that she ends up being played as either a support or even as a marksman with a carry support. Her attack speed scales extremely poorly, and thus traditional marksman builds are ill-suited for her. They can definitely still work, just like in the case of Jin, but Senna doesn't have built-in multipliers like him and also relies heavily on her passive to increase her damage. Building lethality and armor penetration is is usually a safer option on her. Here's a build that our challenger analysts recommend. You'll want to run Airy because it's flexible with her abilities. If she heals or shields an ally, it's a nice boost to her utility. In lane, her extremely low attack speed and long range on Q benefit from the easy to proc instant damage boost. The other runes are definitely preference, but going for some scaling isn't bad on her since her ratios are pretty good. A good comparison for Senna's laning is comparing her to Nami. Think about how Nami's W works. It deals damage and also heals her or an ally based on your positioning. The range and positioning itself is different, but the concept still stands with Senna's Q. What separates a great Senna from a mediocre Senna is how she uses Q during the lane phase. To get the most out of it, you'll need to try to hit both your lane partner and an enemy with it simultaneously. For the most part though, the lane phase is a time for Senna to scale up. She's looking to poke and start farming up some mist to build AD and become more potent for the later parts of the game. How you play during the laning phase will heavily depend on who your lane partner is. Senna, quite frankly, can't function with a passive lane partner. It should come as no surprise that Lucian is a great example of a lane partner for her, so we'll use him for the sake of explanation. We're gonna help you break down what you need to do in the laning phase, but do note that we believe Senna is actually strongest when laning with champions who have CC, regardless of if they are a marksman or a mage. So Senna's trading patterns revolve around getting in and getting out. Out. If her lane partner moves in aggressively for a trade, she can angle her Q to heal and deal damage simultaneously. Lucian can dash in and start his usual trade pattern at the same time Senna is positioning to land her Q. After Lucian dashes in, Senna can look for an auto attack and disengage with her E, making it difficult for enemies to trade back any damage. By shrouding herself and her ally, they're able to walk away, unable to be punished by auto attacks. The alternative, more aggressive trade pattern would be to look for a 
W right after the initial trade. This is why champions who have crowd control are great for Senna, since they can make it easier for her to land it. Lucian typically builds a Bilgewater Cutlass early on, and this definitely counts as it's just enough of a slow to set up her route. Other champions like Ash, Swain, Varus, and Syndra can help with this as well. It's also worth noting that Senna heavily struggles against melee champions, so when you're up against Yasuo or some bruiser down in the bot lane, know you're going to have to play pretty safe. The reason for this is that enemies can see her and target her if they get close enough to her, even within her shroud. Against these types of champions, she's basically down an entire ability, and her lack of a repositioning tool and reliable crowd control is going to hurt. When you have a passive lane partner or a bad matchup, you'll need to play safe and focus on scaling. Senna is a champion who does really well in her good matchups and horrendously bad in her losing ones. This is mostly because her E only has situational utility. In other words, it has counterplay. Thank you, Riot. I'm not even being sarcastic. Thank you. The mid and late game is where Senna starts to shine. Like we mentioned, she's mostly played in the early game to scale up, you know, typical marksman things. Remember that her E isn't a get out of jail free card all the time. You'll need to be careful about warding because getting caught out as Senna usually means that you're dead. Its utility is more impactful during team fights where you can hide your allies from auto attacks and also mask their identities. This provides a lot of potential surprises when enemies won't necessarily know if the guy running in 1v5 is your tank Malphite or your Zed trying to flash and ult their carry. By this stage of the game, you should also have plenty of stacks on your passive, meaning your attack range can merit a bit more safety. In team fights, you're going to play like a typical marksman. You're looking to auto attack whenever you can and focus down your primary targets. Also, you need to use your Q off cooldown to maximize its effectiveness. Remember that auto attacking reduces its cooldown by one second. If you want to keep your allies alive or just deal damage, keep auto attacking and keep yourself alive. At the same time though, you have to be on the lookout for your teammates because after after all, you're still the support. It's a bit of a juggling act for sure, so make sure to assess whether you need to play front to back or want to help your front line by using your ultimate. Regardless of whether you're going to be using your E to peel for yourself or your teammates, you need to take into consideration the best way to use it, as this is your strongest ability by far. Versus ranged champions, you'll want to use it to provide protection to your allies as they bide their time, waiting for cooldowns. In the same way that Pike needs to play like an assassin, but also look out for his teammates, Senna plays kind of like a marksman who needs to do the same. Okay, now let's get into a couple of tips before you head on the rift. One thing you should know is that your Q provides a lot of sustain later into the game. This will help with sieges and neutral objectives. If you're on Baron, have your team line up for your Q and reset the cooldown by auto attacking and then repeat the process. On sieges, you'll hit the minion wave or turret to accomplish this. Your E isn't that useful against team comps with a lot of melee champions. You can pick her if your team needs a marksman and your bot laner opted to pick a mage instead. Another tip is that you should make sure to be on the lookout for other lanes as soon as you hit level 6. Your ult travels very quickly and you pretty much make a big difference on whether or not one of your lanes is won or lost. The shield is pretty impactful as well, especially in close fights. Another tip is if you're pushing for a kill and you're at a slight advantage, you can use your E to move aggressively and get even closer to your enemies. From there, it would be easier to land your W. Mist rates disappear for good if you even leave them on the ground too long. Nevertheless, they can be worth leaving for more angles for your Q, especially in team fights. That concludes the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want some more content to help you improve, then please check out ProGuides.com using the description link below. We've teamed up with the best pro players to create guides designed to take your gameplay to the next level. Also, go find yourself a challenger coach on there. They're available right now. They're awesome people. They'll help you climb. They're also really nice, so you'll make a new friend. That's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Good luck in your next few games, and we'll see you on the Rift.